think we can go ahead and, and maybe kick things off. I, I'm to that point, I'm really happy and excited to see so many familiar faces, but so many new faces as well. Um, good morning from, from Pitzer, good morning from Claremont. Really excited to uh, kick things off with our FLC meeting, uh, which is an open meeting during family weekend. It has been a pleasure and an honor to be with so many of you in different capacities over the uh, course of our virtual family weekend. This is our second year doing it this way. And there are definitely some, some, some pros and some cons, but for the most part, the, the exciting thing for us is that we get to spend this time with all of you from all across the globe. So I am really looking forward to being able to have um, a really robust and dynamic conversation. We are going to hold our general meeting as we normally would, but we're probably gonna go into a little bit more detail about some of our committee work and some of the uh, incredible um, transitions that are happening over the course of the next few months, as well as some exciting updates. We'll hear from some of our campus leadership. Um, but yes, I just wanted to welcome each and every one of you. Um, and then I'll pass it over now to our co-presidents of the Family Leadership Council, Shari Simon and Jamie Rhodes. Well, hello, everyone. As I already shared, I'm really excited to see so um, many of you and um, many people who I met just yesterday. I'm really happy that um, you were able to, to join us. Um, let's see, what do I want to say now? Um, you know, I don't, we have a whole agenda planned, but um, I think, you know, I'm going to say to Jamie, I mean, I'm really excited by what. Um, I experienced yesterday. Um, while I did attend, I'm gonna be frank, I did attend um, a couple of lectures that didn't quite have the attendance that I would have you know, hoped for. Um, people were engaged. Um, we, the, all the lectures were fantastic. Um, I learned many things. And in fact, when we go around, I thought it would be kind of fun for those of us were here yesterday in, in addition to sort of reflections on yesterday to actually share um, one thing that they might have learned. Cause I, I was struck by not just um, from, you know learning about a, a particular topic but how much more I continue to learn about really some of the fantastic things that are happening at Pitzer. And so for those of you who weren't able to attend yesterday, I thought it might be nice um, to go around in addition to the reflections to also share, um, you know, in, in just a few words, one or two things um, that were learned. Jamie, I'll kick it over to you now. Sure, wonderful, thank you. And you know, thank you all for being here. I and mean, before I get started, I wanted to thank you for being at this meeting, but also for participating in Family Weekend. It is, um, you know, such a unique opportunity for us as family members to be able to have this window into the college and um, these remarkable people that uh, influence and help our, our students grow and learn. And I also really want to thank the amazing faculty and staff um, and all the FLC members who, who helped make this weekend possible um, and have contributed to making it such a great event. So thank you all. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed the sessions and learned something new, as Shari said. Um, and I hope you're all inspired by all these amazing, the people and the programs and just the offerings of the college and the culture here. Um, there are, um, you know, I think it's worth taking a few minutes to introduce everybody to the FLC, uh, which is formally the governing body of the Pitzer Family Association. Um, for those of you who are new to the college or haven't um, participated before. Um, and I think, you know, I'm here and I think we're all here to support the college and achieving its mission to further enhance the experience of students here at Pitzer and to cultivate a stronger sense of community uh, among the Pitzer families um, in order to do just that, to help our students and to help the college. Um, and I think as an FLC, we do this in a variety of different ways. This includes, you know, fundraising uh, for the college, which I think is a traditional role for families, um, but also, and perhaps more importantly, over the last two years, by contributing our time our energy, our talents, our experience um, to, to enhance the college experience. And especially during these tumultuous times to really help um, sort of reinforce that sense of community and belonging um, for families and for students. Um, and I think, you know, one of the kind of unexpected benefits of COVID has been really this transition to enable more inclusive participation in FLC activities 
um, and in college activities, uh, which has often been kind of biased by people's geography of where they live. Um, but now with the ability to participate remotely, I think it really opens the door for a much deeper level of engagement um, by folks, no matter where they are or their ability to be here in person. And we have certainly seen this bear out over the last few years and has been really, truly wonderful. Um, and so, you know, I, I really encourage all of you to take advantage of the opportunities to, to really be engaged with the college uh, and with this family community. Um, you know, we haven't really talked about how to, Shari and I, in terms of the best way to, to organize um, ourselves, but in terms of the work of for, for today's meeting and handle that transition. But in terms of the work of the FLC, it's really divided across committees. Um, and we really shifted to a stronger committee structure to coordinate that work. Um, and we're going to see that today <clears throat> as we um, hear from the committee chairs from each of the committees of the FLC. Um, and as we divide up into, um, you know, deeper discussions within each of those committees. And so, you know, the committees of the FLC are student and family experience, um, uh, career services, fundraising and communication, events and volunteer engagement, nominations and governance. And then we often have ad hoc, or we, we have the ability to have ad hoc committees to address really key issues that come up. And so today, I really encourage you to think about which committees seem like um, they're the most appealing to you um, in terms of ways you might things you want to understand better about and also play ways in which uh, you might want to contribute um, to the college and the FLC um, and jump into those um, to the relevant committee that, that you find most interesting um, and really dive in and roll up your sleeves because we are here to support the college in an active way um, and to support the students and so um, today is a great opportunity to sort of get to know the people and the work that we do um, and as members everyone here is a member of the Pitzer Family Association by dint of having a student at the college and all members of the Pitzer Family Association are welcome to participate in the FLC work. Uh, and so first and foremost, I want to invite you to do that and really roll up your sleeves. And secondly, um, you know, to the extent that you find this work engaging and these group of people engaging, um, you know, I want you to consider joining more um, formally and transitioning into a full member of the FLC. Uh, there's a lot of great work to be done. Um, lots of ways that we can support the college and each other and the students. Um, and it's just been a really wonderful and rewarding experience for myself. So I encourage you all to, to seriously consider that. And I'm gonna say, thank you, Jamie. This is why we have co-presidents. So when I hit it on about a cylinder and a half, uh, <laughs> Jamie can step in and hit it um, on, all, on all five um, or all four or all eight. That was a 10, <laughs> um, really. So thank you. Hopefully that was, you all got a tremendous introduction to um, who we are and what we're all about. So um, Brandon, do you want to kick it off? And I saw that we have a, a few more people join us. So I just wanted to sort of reintroduce myself. I'm Brandon Kyle, Executive Director of Alumni and Engagement Annual Giving. And it is really an honor to have all of you joining us today. Um, you're going to be hearing from, as Jamie mentioned, many of our council members, as well as some of our, our key leadership on campus. Uh, but I thought it would be a really great opportunity to just uh, at least see and hear from some of our newcomers quickly, if you could just um, say your name and perhaps where you're, where you're coming from. Let's see if we can pick a few out of the, uh, maybe we'll start with Dan. Sorry, we, we... Hi, Zio Sain, third of a class of 22. Thank you, C. And so then we'll focus on our, our newcomers for um, joining us today. So, uh, Fan, would thank you. Next. Hi, yeah, my name is Fan. Uh, I'm the class of 25, just learning the new terminology. And I come from El Paso, Texas. I put that on our star on the back. And <laughs> nice to meet you all. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, let's see, uh, Mindy Rainey. Hi, I'm Mindy. This is my husband, Jim. We live in Baltimore, Maryland, and our son is a freshman. Awesome. Thank you for joining us. Let's see. Uh, Stuart? Hi, uh, my name is Stuart Horn. I live um, in between Houston and Austin. Uh, my background is actually the view from my son's room at Scandera, and he's a freshman. Awesome. Welcome, Stuart. Thank you for joining us. <clears throat> uh, KJ. Um, okay, let's see. Yeah. Darlene? 
Thank you, Brandon. Um, Darlene Robles, and I'm very close to Claremont and Whittier, not more than 15 miles uh, <laughs> west. And uh, my daughter is a sophomore, 2024. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us. Let's see. Uh, Michael. Let's see. Yeah, I, did, I don't know if you meant me. Um, Mike Stankwitz, but hi, I'm Mike Stankwitz. Uh, uh, my son, Raphael, is class of 2025 and loving it, living in Atherton. I am based in the East Bay area in Oakland. So, so, let's, see, uh, let's see, Charmaine. Hi, <clears throat> my name is uh, Charmaine. My son is a junior, so next year he'll be done. And we're in North County, San Diego in Carlsbad. And, and uh, his roommates just figured out how close we are. <laughs> they live in Manhattan and Seattle and they're like, dude, why don't we come down here to the beach more often? <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Let's see, uh, Lynette. Let's see. Okay. Lynette, are you able to, to join? To if not, that's okay. There will be other opportunities to. to no? Okay, let's see. Have I missed any of our newcomers today? You get Mindy and Jim. Oh, perfect. You got us, I think. He got us. You did? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, looks like Lynette's connecting the audio. No worries. Well, welcome, Lynette, to you. We're excited to have you with us as well. Um, so I think what we'll do is we will go ahead and, and kick things off. Like I mentioned before, we um, have some of our campus leadership here to share some um, important updates about our transition, things that are happening on campus. Of course, <clears throat> uh, many of you have had an opportunity to meet with and hear from uh, Jim Marchant who has been with the college for over 20, is it 26 years now, Jim? Um, the longstanding uh, member of our Pixar community. Uh, if there's any question that you have, he's probably the first and per best person to go to. I know he's been a tremendous help to me and my team and to all of Advance, but really to the entire Pixar community. So I'm really um, honored um, that you're able to join us, Jim. Uh, Jim is our Vice President of Strategic Initiatives and Community Relations. Um, and you're going to hear a little bit uh, about all of the goings on at, at uh, Pitzer um, from him. So thank you so much, Jim, for joining us. Thanks, Brandon. Good morning, everyone, or good evening in London, I guess. To see so many familiar faces and see some new ones as well. Um, hope everyone's having a good weekend. Looks like a really fulfilling program. I'm sorry I missed some of it. I'm in the process of moving. So I uh, apologize if any of my comments overlap with what you may have heard from President Oliver yesterday. Um, I can talk forever about Pitzer, and if Brandon doesn't stop me, I will. So what I'll try to do here this morning is hit some highlights about what's going on with Pitzer and our campus, and then maybe there'll be a little bit of time for questions after. Happy to answer those or offline. You can always reach me on email as well, and I'll stay on and stay on the chat as well. So the first one that's at the forefront of everything right now at Pitzer in terms of, you know, the college is transition, right? We announced recently that President Oliver will be retiring at the end of the academic year. He's done a great job, put the college in a really strong position. Thankfully, we're really stable as an institution. And so we're getting ready to announce an interim president in the next few days. In fact, I think I have a meeting this afternoon where we're going to talk about that and maybe write out an announcement that you'll see tomorrow, most likely. But interim may be important, but what's more important is the ongoing search for a president to continue here with the legacy that President Oliver set. So that's going to happen over this next academic year. You'll see more information about that soon. So we have a trustee committee that's formed that's looking at firms to help us with that search. And there'll be representation from students, faculty, staff, and I'm sure there'll be opportunities for a parent leadership uh, group to give some input on those candidates as well. So I, I can't say enough. I've worked with three presidents at Pitzer, how much we're gonna miss President Oliver, just who he is as a person, his leadership, his style, his grace, what he's done to elevate Pitzer and our core values, but we're going to be uh, in a good position to hire a really strong president to succeed him and, and continue on. COVID, I know, is also important on the forefront of what we're doing every day, and thankfully, we're doing very, very well with COVID at Pitzer. 
Um, you know, we monitor cases very closely. If you haven't had a chance, you can check out our Pathway Forward website. We have a dashboard there. We track the number of cases on a daily and weekly basis. Thankfully, cases continue to go down after the Omicron surge. We're doing really well there. And we're back, as you know, in-person learning. And some of the, the mask mandates are going to be loosened soon. But as you probably know, in LA County, we have some stricter health guidelines than the state of California. So some will continue on as well for now. But I think our students have been very patient and persistent. We have great uh, input from students on our COVID task force, which meets every week to talk about how we're doing as a campus and what our protocols are. So COVID is not behind us yet, obviously, but we're doing very well in that regard. So that's good. Some of you also know we had a norovirus outbreak at Pitzer, unfortunately, which you know made it doubly hard when it came to dining and some other campus activities because that spreads primarily through contact. So we had to restrict some of the dining hall access. We did a lot of to-go food. As of tomorrow morning, we're done with that. We had zero norovirus cases the last three or four days, I believe. So we can move on. Dining can resume as normal in person. Hot food, serve yourself. That's exciting. I know campus dining is important to us and our students. Uh, I just want to say, I don't want to get defensive about it, but I know there was stuff on like a Facebook group. Hey, what's Pitzer doing in the dining hall? Unfortunately, it's person to person spread, right? It's just hygiene that prevents norovirus spread. So whatever we're doing in the dining hall, thankfully it wasn't about food. It wasn't about the quality of food or the service. It was about student to student spread. And we started a campaign. I think the students have been very um, responsible in terms of helping eradicate, so to speak, norovirus on our campus. So I'm glad about that. Uh, I'll just talk about some other things going on. And then if there's questions, like I said, feel free to chime in. Um, we did a campus climate survey recently of our students. We're part of a, a leadership group with liberal arts colleges in Southern California based at USC. And we did a campus climate survey. We're looking forward to seeing the results from our students. We're gonna do a similar one with our staff and faculty this spring. So more information on those surveys and those results will be forthcoming. Uh, many of you may be familiar with our um, Inside Out program, where we um, have students that are traditionally on campus go into have classes with incarcerated individuals off campus. And our first cohort of individuals that are part of the incarcerated group, the Inside students, are going to graduate. I should say the, con the complete cohort. Some of them already graduated, right? The complete cohort will graduate this spring, which is really exciting. We've had a lot of success there, and we've got some notoriety for that, but it's the right thing to do. It's consistent with Pittsburgh values, and we're looking forward to continuing that, what we call the Prison BA program. Um, accreditation, never been an issue for Pitsu. You know, we're a very strong institution. We do get a visit from our accreditation agency about every eight to 10 years. We're halfway through our cycle now. We're supposed to have a four-year review. Because of COVID, it's been delayed a little bit, but we're in a strong position in terms of accreditation. Part of my role now is going to be working as a liaison with our accreditation team. So we're going to file an interim report in the next two months to tell our accreditation agency how we're doing. And, and thankfully we're doing very well despite COVID. You know, I mean, COVID was not enjoyable for any of us, but Pittsburgh has come out really strong after COVID financially and otherwise. Which, um, which reminds me, enrollment, right? We're always worried about enrollment, especially when there's a downturn in the economy or something like a plague that we did not anticipate. We've done extremely well with enrollment, new students. Some of you are parents of new students. We have over 3,700 applications again this year for next year's class, very competitive as usual. We're looking at about a 16 to 17% admit rate. And we're looking to enroll a few less students than last year. Last year, we were fortunate. We had more students than we anticipated. We were able to house them because we have the off-campus ability of a Claremont Collegiate, but enrollment looks really good for the college and financially we're, we're in a strong position uh, as well. We were able to resume some study abroad activities. So about 30 of our students are abroad this semester in various sites. Some of them are Pitzer run, some are exchanges. Um, you know, normally we would have over almost 100 students abroad a semester. So we're looking to build that back up. One of our signature programs is in Costa Rica. It's a restoration ecology program in the rainforest of Costa Rica. Pitzer owns property there. We've been working on a dormitory project, building a dormitory in Costa Rica. And thankfully, post COVID, that's moving forward. And we should finish that dormitory by the end of July. And we'll have a ceremony for that as well. You'll, you'll learn more about that soon. We started a new academic program in cognitive science, which I know is of interest to many of our students. And we also created a minor in data science this past year. So a lot of students have interest in, in, in data, data analysis, science. So we're continuing to expand in that area. You know, we leveraged the consortium to take advantage of the courses there. But as some of you may know, 
Harvey Mudd is not able to accommodate any of our more any of our students in computer science, so we're able to offer now a computer science introductory course at Pitzer that you don't have to rely on Harvey Mudd or CMC. So we're happy that our students are able to tap into that. That's for non-majors, but it's, I think it's a good tool for many of our students, even if they don't want to study that beyond that introductory course. Uh, speaking of science, we are moving forward with construction and expansion of the Keck Science Facility. Some of you know there was a three college partnership for many years between CMC, Scripps, and Pitzer. And that partnership now is breaking off. CMC is going to build their own science facility. They're moving forward on that. Pitzer and Scripps have a strong connection over expanding and building a new one. We've raised money, we've borrowed money, we're in a good position, and now it's gonna happen. The groundbreaking will be this May to make it uh, official. And we anticipate in a year and a half, almost two years, we're gonna open up for, uh, for classes in the newly expanded Keck Science Facility. All right, graduation. Um, this impacts some of you, um, this is all good. You know, we had to delay graduation, postpone it in one instance. The class of 2020 will be coming back to celebrate in-person graduation this May. Uh, those of you that may be parents of the class of 2020, you should have those details. That's exciting. That class decided at the time to postpone it rather than have a virtual ceremony, which the class of 21 did. And then obviously the class of 2022 will have their in-person graduation ceremony on campus in May as well. You know. Hopefully no COVID issues, but right now uh, we have a limit of two guests per family. We're hoping that'll change and we can have unlimited guests as we usually do on campus. So hopefully it'll continue to trend in the right direction in terms of coronavirus cases on campus and in the, in the area. We're also gonna have an in-person celebration for the class of 21 as we have promised. So there's a lot going on at Pitzer. A lot of positive things happening with our students on the athletic fields, in the classroom, in their internships. It's good to see some kind of sense of normalcy in our students being engaged and really living uh, their Pitzer experience to their fullest. So I'll leave it at that. I know um, Kamala is gonna talk about our Strive to Thrive program, but if we have a few minutes for questions, I'm happy to answer them now, or we can um, do it offline as I mentioned. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jim. Um, are there any questions that, that Jim might be able to answer? Um, Jim, I was asked um, one question yesterday, um, and some of the folks are are on this call to, are, are joining us today who were in that session, and that was about the Inside Out program and um, funding. Um, people wanted to know, is that a fully funded program by Pitzer? Um, how does that work? And, you know, people wanted to know, can they contribute and so on? So if you could share sure. anything about that, that'd be yeah. wonderful. I mean, surprisingly, it's not that expensive to run that program. And we have buy-in from the other Claremont colleges. So professors at the other colleges also teach courses. Um, we have some grant funding that has helped um, start the program that's continuing. We're applying for another grant with a large uh, foundation at this point to, to expand the BA part of the program. So right now, I, I always hate to say, because I have a fundraising background too, don't send us money. But right now we're in good position financially for that program. So if something changes, I'll let you know. But right now, um, we're not looking for outside donations. We're looking to sustain what we have at this point. Um, and there are some overhead costs and stuff with, with courses here and there and some transportation costs that are minimal. But right now, um, we're in a good position financially. Unless, unless our new VP for advancement, Kim Shiner, has shared differently, Brandon, I haven't heard that that's a, a fundraising priority at this point for the college. I think the other question that arose in the session I was in is there's a lot of people whose kids aren't getting in. Uh, so it it's also on the, the collaborative Pitzer, the more traditional Pitzer student being able to be in those classes. And could there be more of them? Because a lot of students want to be in them and can't get in. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up, Megan. I hadn't heard that. I'll, um, I'll talk to our dean about that. I have a feeling, though, just on the surface, that it's the access is more about having enough faculty willing to teach the course. It's not so much a financial barrier. But I'll find out from, from Dean Amoto, and I'll report back to the, the PLC. But that's good to know that there's interest. Hopefully, we can um, accommodate that going forward. I appreciate that. Jim, I have a question about this. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm Rosalie Gutierrez. Uh, welcome. Um, about the uh, Inside Out. So if it's not a financial need right now, I believe in the giving program, that's one of the options that parents can choose. Yeah, I, I apologize. 
I um, have not been involved with that program in the last few months. So if it's a drop down option, you mean when you go online to, to make a donation? Um, I believe so. Yeah, well, that's that's good to know. I mean, if there's interest here and you want to give, by all means, obviously. But as far as, you know, when I look at the strategic plan and the college's future, it hasn't risen to the top in terms of fundraising priority. It doesn't mean it's not an important program for us. But I want to go back and clarify with um, with my colleagues on that. I'll give you bad information. If we have people that are willing to donate, you know, the last thing I want to do is say, no, no, don't worry about it. So I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Maybe okay, some thank you. advancement could help follow up with that as well. I appreciate that. Thanks. I, I saw a lot of positive nodding of the head that the dining hall is going to go back to normal operation. So that was exciting, right? I mean, it was unfortunate that the norovirus hit right after we got back from the semester and we were still you know, restricted in terms of coronavirus. So the food is important. I know this is an educational institution primarily, but the food in that environment and that atmosphere is important. The inside dining is important for students to connect with one another and with faculty. So we're glad that we're resuming operations there. Plus one on that on the dining Plus two that's on that. one yeah. of the center features um so jim i want to ask one other question and for those who are who are visiting us and joining us today one of the wonderful things about the family leadership council is that we really uh this is a group that just really talks with each other about what we're seeing right so on both ends you know the school sort of saying these are challenges we're seeing from families perhaps and also all of us sort of giving an eye on some of the themes we're seeing and i i just want to raise up with the numbers for the graduation that you know from outside looking in we all saw a super bowl in los angeles and <laughs> you know we're seeing the world opening up so to be super clear about why only two tickets at an outside venue as you move forward if there are other outside things happening. And I realize they're probably, this is the other thing we all learn as families connecting with the college through this is that everything's more complicated than we think. Um, I work in higher ed too, so I know that world. But so just to be super clear in the communication, why only two, is it a staffing issue? Is it a resource issue? You know, whatever it might be, because then people understand the full message if if they have to go that route. No, I appreciate that, Meg. I mean, <clears throat> some of you may know I'm also involved with communication around COVID for the college. So I appreciate those messages because I want to know what's going on, what people are hearing and thinking. In this particular case, for now, we've been directed by LA County. There's a subgroup for institutes of higher ed that meets about every two weeks, that that's our limit. But it is just ridiculous when you look at the Super Bowl with eight or 90,000 people, right? Just down the road. <laughs> So uh, it's not a staffing or logistics issue on our end. I mean, we've always been open in terms of how many people can come to campus. So we'll we'll keep asking that question and hopefully by the time we get closer to graduation, it won't be a limitation, but that's that's where we are at this point based on guidance from the county. And Jim, I would just, uh, on the back of this discussion, I would just add, um, first of all, to the extent that we can find opportunities to open that up, I think it's really important um, for a whole bunch of reasons that I'm happy to, to talk through. Um, but I also think that we're in a unique situation where um, there are five colleges and, um, you know, being the, the relative visibility of, of different approaches that are taken across different colleges raises different kinds of questions. So I just want to make sure that, you know, when we see other colleges having outdoor events where there's lots of people, um, we're understanding what the constraints actually are and, and making sure that we communicate them in a way that make sure the families understand those, you know, whatever our specific decision-making priorities are. No, I appreciate that, Jamie, and I appreciate how diplomatic you are. I mean, I know, <laughs> <laughs> like the blunt version of that, because Jamie's too nice and polite to say it is, when CMC and Scripps do something different than Pitts or Pitts are gonna say, well, why do we do that? Why were we more conservative? Or why do we handle it differently, right? And we're all in the same county in the same city. So we have to be consistent as much as possible across campuses, but, um, Good point. We, you're right. We need to explain why we may be doing something differently. And my hope is none of us do anything differently. We just open up our campuses as much as possible, right? Especially for yes. graduation this May. Yeah. Will class of 20 and um, 22 graduations be on different weekends? Yeah. I believe they're up, yeah, one week apart. Yeah. Okay. 14th will be bit. May 14th for class of 2022 and May 21st for the class of 2020. Okay. Great. And then the celebration for 2021 is on one of those weekends as well, obviously. I'm not sure which. Mm -hmm. Oh, Brandon, which 
which I believe it's for 2021, or excuse me, May 21st, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. great. And uh, there should be a website for the commencement. If it's not updated, it will be this week, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. A lot of planning's going on. A lot of communication with students from those classes, right, to make sure that we're honoring their wishes as well. Well, I appreciate everyone's time. Um, I can be reached pretty easily. If you ever want to contact me, it's jim.marchant, M-A-R-C-H-A-N-T, at pitzer.edu. Happy to communicate with any of you about anything going forward. Enjoy the rest of your weekend in this meeting. Thanks. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you very much, Jim. Like I shared, Jim is a wealth of knowledge, and um, I'm just really, really excited that you were able to join us and share so much valuable information. So thank you again, Jim, um, for taking the time. Um, I also want to uh, sort of piggyback on um, uh, Rosalie's comment. Uh, to my knowledge, from an advancement point of view, there is no fund directed uh, specifically to the Inside Out program. So I want to kind of connect with you to see where maybe that language exists. Um, but we'll definitely go and look into that. Just to, it was to sure. it was Dr. Bandry, or Professor Bandry, who who basically said that you can give by clicking down on the social justice initiatives, and that. Um, the Inside Out program was came under that heading. So that was that's what she had shared. So that's where that okay. is coming from. Okay. Um, but I don't know if, you know, that I think that is that correct, Rosalie? Yeah, exactly. During the presentation, she said that. So it just yeah. kind of raised a question when you mentioned there's not a financial need. If there's not one there, then we probably should consider removing it so that folks can donate too other more, you know, um, needy programs. Okay. Thank you. So next we will have an, um, an update from our director of annual giving. Um, she will be highlighting one of our most probably comprehensive campaigns around mental health and wellness um, on campus and within our community, a Strive to Drive program, which was launched by a family member of the Pitzer community, the Raskin family. Um, we're really excited about this initiative for a variety of reasons. Um, this is something that is obviously near to dear to our community's heart, but also we know that this is a priority um, for our parent and family community as well. Um, so with that, I will pass it over to our Director of Annual Giving, Kamale. Thanks, Kamale. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Um, like Brandon shared, I wanted to um, speak on our Strive to Thrive program. I'm going to share my screen with some important links and information. Okay, so uh, like Brandon mentioned, our Strive to Thrive program was uh, created by two parents, P23s. Their, their son is a junior. Um, back in 2019, they actually approached the college and they saw a need um, for mental health resources exclusively for Pitzer students on campus. Um, some of you, most of you probably know there's a um, consortium resource, Mansoor. Um, a bunch of, uh, you know, all the students at the five C's accessing that resource, it's also open to faculty and staff, can cause it to get a little bit overrun um, and just really hard to make appointments. So these parents saw a need and they wanted to create a Pittsburgh specific program that is, provides case uh, management support, but also preventative um, support, you know, educating students on the importance of prioritizing your mental health and wellness and how to um, you know, work through their work through their own um, obstacles so that they can be self sufficient in this area. So, with that, um, obviously, over the past couple of years, mental health has become an even greater topic for all of us. Um, given the past few years we've had, so um, Larry and Ramesh approached us again, and they said, "Hey, what what more can we do? You know, the program has been up and running for a couple of years. We've been able to accomplish a lot, but let's see what else we can do." And thus, um, the current campaign that we're in now um, was born. So I wanted to show you the campaign page we have. And I wanted to highlight um, the video that's on our campaign page. If you haven't seen this campaign page yet, um, we'll drop a link to it in the chat um, soon. Um, I encourage you to read it, read through um, the campaign history. I'm sorry, the program history, what we're raising money for. But I wanted to take some time to share this video because I think it's really um, moving, especially for our parent community.
And I hope it works. There it is. Our connection to Pitzer is through our son, of course, and we absolutely love it here. We feel very close to the school and the community. We were aware already that anxiety and depression and mental health problems is a pre-existing problem amongst college students. I am a practicing uh, physician, practicing primary care, and I would have to say that depression and anxiety are one of the most common reasons I see patients in the office. It is a community health problem that I think can only be dealt with in a community health solution or resolution. It really takes a village to make the necessary changes. All of our students are impacted one way or another, and all of Pitzer was very receptive to doing something. So that was the driving force to get a program along the lines of Strive to Thrive in place. You know, this program, Strive to Thrive, has already made an impact for a lot of the students on campus. Strive to Thrive, I think, is so successful and has so much promise because it is focused on providing the students with the tools that are necessary for them to become more resilient and more successful and more sure of themselves, both in day-to-day -day life here on campus but also further down the road as they go from here to graduate school or the job market. Every bit of help is going to help magnify the impact. Please join us to try to help enhance the quality of the health and wellness programs because I think the payoff is going to be multiple and significant, not just during the students' time here at Pitzer, but well beyond. When you save a life, you save the world. Okay. Um that doesn't pull on your heartstrings as a parent, as a human. Um, I don't know what will. If these parents are just super awesome, very, very wonderful to work with, and they have a ton of love and passion for their son and all Pitzer students and just our community as a whole. So um, wanted to highlight the specific areas of need that this campaign is raising money for. So we have a $500,000 goal. The campaign launched um, towards the end of January. We have until June 30th, which is the end of our fiscal year, to hopefully meet this goal. Um, Larry and Ramesh seeded the first $100,000 for the campaign, and we are about 22% to goal as of yesterday. Um, so what this $500,000 will be used for, infrastructure is a big one. Um, if you've been to campus or not, there's the Gold Student Center. It's on the first floor. Um, there's a gym. There's some office space. Um, but there's definitely opportunity to create a designated wellness space on campus there where you have physical wellness. Um, we, students can have meetings with you know, counselors or case management or just a safe place to land and decompress and prioritize your wellness. So funding for that. Um, next is counseling, case management, and administrative support. So we have a few awesome um, staff in student affairs that are managing programming for mental health. Um, like Larry was mentioning in the video, you know, equipping students with the tools um, necessary that they can be resilient on their own but they're also managing individual case support. So that, that, that's a lot um, on their plate. And if we just had more administrative support to do all of those things and meet students where they're at, um, what more, how many more lives could we touch? Um, next is equitable access for diverse student populations. So um, we all know that the Pitzer experience is not uh, linear for every student. So providing additional or um, more tailored resources to our different student groups and populations. Um, and then lastly, programming and student engagement. So extending upon the current programming we have within Strive to Thrive, um, particularly there's a Wellness Wednesday program that that team puts on every Wednesday for students um, that talks about all different types of wellness. But then on top of that, how can we support our allies uh, like the Pitzer Advocates, um, survivors for sexual assault and such. So a very, very big comprehensive campaign 
From an engagement and annual giving standpoint, I um, wanted to talk about the ways we're promoting this campaign. First and foremost is events. Um, so, you know, our, our team is puts on events all year round. Um, and like Jamie was sharing earlier, the bandwidth that we're uh, that we have now with virtual events, even though sometimes it's not always preferred, we are able to um, meet a lot of people uh, where they're at, um, provide even uh, more events and programming, and um, have tailored events to talk about specific initiatives happening like Strike the Drive. So for example, we have our book club um, that's really popular that Jill Hawthorne on our team does an amazing job with. Um, so looking at the book for this upcoming um, season and saying, how can we you know, incorporate mental health into that? How can we incorporate uh, mental health into family weekend? There was a wellness workshop that, that you might've attended yesterday. So um, showing the, the value of this priority on campus and, and the need for it as well. One Week One Pitzer's coming up. Um, it's another big um, campaign for us here at Pitzer's. So how are we looking to incorporate Chapter 5 in, in those initiatives? Second is social media. I want to highlight um, Amanda's son. If you met her, know her. She's putting together some amazing content um, on our social media pages, addressing mental health and wellness. Just information for you uh, um, as, a, as a member of the community, how you can work on your own mental health and wellness, and then um, plugging in Strive to Thrive and how the students are working on their mental health and wellness here. And then lastly, story-based solicitations. Um, so how are we putting our beneficiaries and our benefactors in the forefront to tell this story and then inspire others to give? Um, so I will stop there. Does anybody have any questions or comments about this campaign? Thank you. Awesome, fantastic. Thank you so much, Kamale. We're, again, as I mentioned before, we're really excited about this initiative because it is like one of our most comprehensive um, campaigns. This extends with our, our partnership with OSA, Office of Student Affairs, um, as well as our communications office. It's really an all hands on deck, including on both ends of our volunteer leadership sort of spectrum with the alumni board and the family leadership council, because this impacts all and this has so much potential to change lives um, in a very tangible and meaningful way. So I just appreciate um, all of you for all of your support. Um, and especially thank you, Kamale, for building out this, this campaign for our office. Um, it's, it sort of truly takes a village. And I think um, a lot of the details that you see are from many, many conversations, digging deep and figuring out what would be the most um, sort of critical need. Um, and although this sort of the campaign in of itself sort of ends June 30th, we also realize that there is really no end to this, to this, uh, to this initiative. So it's going to exceed um, uh, far beyond that in a variety of different ways. And we're bringing in our Vice President of Student Affairs, Sandy Vasquez, to continue those conversations. Um, and the Raskin family has just been so incredibly generous uh, with their support um, thus far. And so I just, I'm really excited to be able to see this grow, particularly on our campus. Um, so again, thank you, Kamale, for for all of your, your presentation. Jamie, I guess I just wanted to add um, how grateful I am, Kamale, and also for the advancement and for the vision of the school and for um, you know these families that are taking leadership in this area. You know, we have for those of you who don't know me, I have four children, um, and we have a very broad sense of family. So we have accordingly a pretty broad sense uh, or perspective into the lives of our student communities across. Um, both the colleges the five C's and more broadly in, in high school. And I think the timeliness of this campaign can't be overstated because there is, as I'm sure all of us can appreciate, um, you know, this, the, the last two years have really sort of elevated the importance of mental wellness and mental wellness practice. And also, um, you know, having, making sure the resources available for students to be able to develop those skills and, and have access to the tools they need to be successful and um, the underappreciated historic nature of mental wellness, I think is really coming to the fore. Um, and I think it's gonna be a long-term sort of longitudinal need for the college as we look at um, the mental wellness challenges that are you know, hitting, that these last two years have created across the entire spectrum and age um, sort of spectrum of, of students. And so being able to have those programming and um, available and kind of ingrained and embedded for um, not just our current students, but for the incoming freshmen and the incoming freshmen in five years and 10 years, because I think it's just gonna be such a long-term need. Um, so I'm just really grateful for the leadership to, to drive in this direction. So thank you. 
And I would like to add actually that um, while of course we, we need to um, fundraise to sustain programs and continue to add on to them, I also really want to acknowledge what Pitzer has done already. Um, I checked on, I just couldn't help myself. I really wanted to see how the process worked. So I called the 909 number listed on, on Thursday and um, my, my call was picked up immediately. I spoke with someone sharing that I was concerned parent, um, just basically saying that um, my daughter was a little resistant, but what would it be? Um, how would the process work? How soon could she get in, um, et cetera? Um, the first thing was, is your daughter in crisis? We can send someone for a, for a well check. Um, immediately, we've got that process set up. And then in terms of scheduling um, time with a uh, counselor or therapist, it was like there were um, there was availability that afternoon, there was availability in Friday and all into next week, which is very, very different than um, the experience and sort of the, the anecdotes that we, you know, that are still circling um, in terms of how difficult it is to get into Mansoor. So um, again, I want to, highlight that and really commend uh, Pitzer for making this a priority and and doing it right now where the need is so great. So please pass that along if you will, Brandon, because it was impressive. Absolutely, thank you so much, Shari. Thank you again, Kamale. Um, I also just wanna be mindful of time. I think we're going to go into uh, our committee session overview and breakout sessions. Um, so what I thought I would do is sort of just give a little bit of a, a quick synopsis of how we got to the place that we are, especially with our committee structure, and a little bit of information about those committees, um, and then we can open it up, I'll pass it back over to, to you, Shari and Jamie, um, and the rest of our committee chairs. Um, so let me see if I can share screen, it's always a hit or miss with this technology, so bear with me. Uh, let's see, okay. Are we, are you able to see the screen? Just a thumbs up would be helpful. Okay, perfect. Okay. So our committee um, alignment um, is really much so geared toward uh, being sort of a, uh, a, a co-owner process uh, around our strategic plan within advancement, specifically with under sort of my area engagement um, and philanthropy. And so one of the things that we wanted to make sure that was happening both with our FLC, our Family Leadership Council, and our alumni board is that we structured our committees in a way that would directly impact the work that we are responsible for. So really none of the, the busy work, if you will, that, that some of us I'm sure have all experienced as either being board members or just volunteers in general, a lot of these assignments are, are critical to how we build community how we you know, remain connected, how we inform um, our, our communities. I think this has probably been one of the most helpful initiatives that we've restructured over the last uh, couple of years. Um, so as Jamie mentioned before, we have sort of five key areas um, and committees. We have our student experience or student and family experience committee, our communications and fundraising committee, events and volunteer engagement, career services, nominations, and governance. With our student and family experience area, we actually have been partnering over the last six months or so with OSA to create a co-curriculum or to co-create a co-curriculum with their process. Um, and now have been looking at what does it really mean to build a culture of community by every class year. Essentially before, the focus had only been on the senior year experience, sort of the, if you will, the traditional model of the senior class gift. Um, well, at that point, um, it's, it's a little challenging to really start talking about philanthropy and community, um, especially during a semester where the focus is really just graduating and classes and what's the, my internship or job opportunity going to look like. So we have decided to partner with OSA in a more meaningful and intentional way to really start that process as early as prospective student day, admitted student day, the summer welcome experience, which our Family Leadership Council is um, sort of one of our major partners in those initiatives. Um, and so that's what their area of focus will be in that area. That specific committee is led by uh, Megan, who is on our call today. Um, our staff liaison for that group is Jill Harthon, who's actually an alum um, of, of Pitzer, as well as a staff member. She's our Associate Director of Constituent Engagement and Campus Partnerships. 
And most recently, we have um, Vince Greer, who many of you met yesterday, who is our ADP of Student Affairs and Dean of Students, and he has agreed to partner with us, particularly in that area, to lend his support, um, which I think is a, is a huge leap um, into the direction that we have wanted to go in. We also have our communications and fundraising area, um, which is really about creating a power, of, so really defining the power of storytelling as we create a culture of philanthropy, community, equity, belonging, inclusion. Our staff liaison for that uh, is Kamale, who you just heard a little bit from uh, earlier today. Um, and our co-chairs for that group um, are Caroline and Susie, who are also on this call today. So again, thank you for your work there. Um, and really it's about collecting as much content and, and providing as much of the narrative around some of our more mission oriented activities so that it's not just about how do we ask for the support we need, but how are we really articulating the why behind that and really building a case for support is critical um, for that group. We also have our events and volunteer uh, engagement committee, which is uh, led by um, excuse me, um, Linda Kwan, who is on this call, and you've seen probably seen her many times throughout uh, the weekend. She is responsible for everything from all the check-in calls, the welcome calls, this event orientation. She is indeed a super volunteer. Um, so you will see her smiling face almost every uh, in-person activity that we've been able to have, uh, whether it's orientation or of course virtually, and we have enjoyed partnering with her every step of the way our staff uh, point person for that is Jenna Goff, who's on this call, and her and her team are responsible for this entire weekend um, and many of the weekends that you see. So I just want to acknowledge that. Again, thank you, Jenna, for putting all of this together. Um, both her and, and Brooke um, have just been doing a tremendous job, and Amanda, uh, of course, is actually responsible for everything you've seen virtually, whether it's social media or online. So again, just a huge shout out to that team in particular because so much of this weekend is, is based on the work that they're doing in that group. Um, our career services uh, committee is sort of connecting, not just within our new platform with Pitzer Connect, but longstanding relationship with this office um, as it relates to both personal and professional development, um, a variety of different opportunities for jobs and internships. Um, we've been partnering for, for years with our winter break job shadowing program. Our staff liaison is the most incredible, <laughs> Brad Tharp, who is also here on this call. Many of you have either worked with Brad um, directly or hopefully will be in the future. Um, Brad is also partnering with our alumni board as well. So again, many of these committees, actually all of these committees are sort of parallel to that group. Um, and so we really couldn't do any of that work without um, his vision and his creativity. Um, he's working um, with one of our FLC members, the co-chair of this group, um, Arnie, uh, who has lent his time and support, and different, which is sometimes not always easy because Arnie is also in London, so they're having to play a little bit with the, with the time there. So I just really appreciate all of um, Arnie's time and consideration as it relates to really getting us to a different place, especially after the pandemic, having to move a lot of this virtual has not uh, been easy. So I just want to acknowledge that. And last but not least, we have nominations and governance. This is probably um, really where we're able to sink our teeth in to the recruitment and onboarding and retention and nominations process. Something that um, we have uh, really have an opportunity to re kind of redefine and reshape what that looks like. Um, currently, I am on both ends of the council and the board, um, sort of taking the lead uh, with working with our coach or actually our chair of this committee, which is Jamie Rhodes, who you've heard from earlier today. He's also our co-president. Um, and we're really looking at how we're reviewing, tracking reports, um, making sure that our bylaws are up to date and the recruitment onboarding process is where it needs to be. This is also an opportunity for us to discuss awards and recognition, um, as well as boarding council nominations process and plan. So you'll be able to learn a little bit more about this. You'll be able to hear also from um, Shari and Jamie and the rest of our, our chairs in just a moment, but I wanted to make sure that we had at least a quick uh, uh, overview of these areas and then why they're so important. Again, this is in a direct alignment with our strategic plan for advancement. This work is so critical to what we do and we could not do it without the support of our volunteers. Um, so really quickly before I hand it over, some of the tasks that you'll be 
um, asked to do in your committee breakout sessions is really have a conversation. We wanna learn, especially from our newcomers, who you are, what area of expertise or network can you bring to the table? What are you hoping for? How do you feel like you would want to support both students and the Pitzer community? There's a variety of different ways that you can do this and I'm looking forward to those conversations um, that'll be had in, the, in those sessions, but also we'll be able to come back and report out before we, we leave today. Um, so I will stop sharing there. I know that was a lot of information, but I want to save as much time for the breakout sessions because that's really where we get the, the most of um, our robust co uh, content. So any questions before I, I pass it over to Shari and Jamie? Jamie? Well, I just had a, a question for how folks can opt into breakout sessions, just to make that clear. Uh, Brooke might have the, the answer. I've already... Um place everybody into their respective uh, committees. Oh, and for new new folks? Um, yeah, I was actually asking a couple people where they prefer to be. Wonderful. <laughs> That's care. Thank and you. Thank you, what Brooke. I want to add is for people who showed up today and who, you know, while we, while we certainly want to engage you to, to the fullest extent that you're willing, um, I don't want you to suddenly say, whoa, I didn't know that I was signing up to, to work on a a committee I was just uh, showing up today to learn a little bit more. Um, so don't disappear now. Please join us um, in the committees that attending a committee meeting does not mean that um, you're, you know, we, we've got you and that you're going to be, you know, that you're committing to anything. But, um, you know, your role is valuable. You're the uh, families and parents of, of freshmen and sophomores, and we really need to hear from you. So please um, participate uh, fully. And, um, you know, if this is something that, you know, you think I really, this is interesting to me and this is exciting, then by all means, um, please join us, but um, on an ongoing basis, but we just wanted to really just wanted to make sure you weren't suddenly going to be hesitant to um, to participate and engage fully at this next step. So um, unless the committee chairs would like to just uh, share anything about their committee beyond what Brandon has said, um, I'd be inclined to move into committee meetings so that those can be meaningful experiences. The one thing I will say before we switch over to the breakout sessions is also that you know, one of the things that's really important to this group as a priority um, in our strategic plan, but also in the commitments of our of our committees, are equity and inclusion. Um, that is a pillar that sits across every single area. We decided to go back and forth and we wanted to create an own separate committee with a group. And then we just, what we really decided at the core of that is that everything we should do at the shape of all committee work should have something to do with equity and inclusion in it. So there's sort of a premise overseeing that. We did a lot of that work, um, which uh, thank you again, Julia Weber, for sharing our true equity conversations and working with the Racial Justice Initiative last year. But that call is something that is intentional. And I want to make sure that we, we highlight that. So you sh those conversations should be had also um, in our committee work, but it's something that is a priority to the FLC. So I just wanted to make sure that we covered uh, that as well before we, we went into our breakout sessions. Perfect. So I think Brooke is going to work her magic. As if you can't tell now, I am not technically savvy. So I'm really, really grateful for all of the work that, that Brooke puts into uh, making this magic happen. So thank you, Brooke. Okay. Fantastic. That time always seems to just fly by. Like it, once we're really getting into the groove of the conversation, it's like, okay, let's talk back. Well, I hope that you were able to have um, some some wonderful conversations, and at, at the very minimum, I hope that you were able to at least get to know each other. Um, I am really looking forward to to hearing a little bit more about some of the conversations that you you've had in your committee breakout sessions. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll just again being mindful of time, we will. Uh, kick things off and I'll look toward either the staff liaison um, or the, the chair to provide uh, those updates. So let's perhaps start with, um, let's, let's start with their events and volunteer uh, group. Uh, Linda, Jenna. Hi everyone, I'll do the update for our team. We, um, we did a lot of family weekend debriefing on this past weekend. Um, we talked about the benefits of hybrid. Um, we talked about being virtual that it is not our 
our first pick, but the value in it um, and how we can continue to connect with others moving forward who can't make it back to campus to make it accessible, but also engaging and entertaining. And we talked about making sure that there's representation among all of the different departments and majors and that the faculty are so fantastic. And one of the benefits of having it virtual is instead of being able to grab your kid and going to the village to go do something fun, you have to stay and listen to the faculty. And if you want to participate and engage, you learn so much about how things work, how the faculty members work with their students, how they set up their course loads and um, the benefit of not being maybe as intimidated of asking your questions or having dialogue with faculty members in you know a big group of a bunch of people and it just feels more intimate and, um, and like you can make more of a connection. So we talked about the benefits there and um, just some ideas of how we can move forward and maybe live stream or have um, some sort of way where what's happening in person can be shared with those who are at home. So I don't know, Linda, is there anything else? I want to be mindful of time and share kind of quick. That was the, the general overview of our, our breakout. I think I have one more comment. Thank you, Jenna, for that. Um, Lisa brought up a good point where she had to consider uh, spending time with her student or be engaged with the sessions that are available. I know that in the past when we had uh, live presentations in person, we allowed parents to join their student on Monday. Well, there's a courses that are not allowed on Monday. Is it possible that we can also include Tuesdays? So it gives that the parent to, and caregivers to consider, okay, I can still spend Monday with my student, but his classes on Tuesday, I could I get to pop in on a Tuesday. Just something to think about. Thank you, everyone. So okay, uh, let's hear from our family and student experience. So Jill or Megan. Um, so first of all, we are really thrilled to have some new folks join us. And what was really great is I think the geographic diversity of some of the new families that came to this committee, as well as two folks who work in higher ed institutions. So um, hopeful that uh, that will, con you know, that some of you will will plan to join our committee because I think you'd bring really great new perspectives. Uh, we are, um, Jill really talked about the co-curricular work that she's leading in a committee and how we um, might support that work and especially the cultivation of class um, by class kinds of student experience efforts. And then we're just really looking forward, Brandon, to learning more about the climate survey um, and how this group might learn and support that work and, and what comes out of it. So I think that's where we're headed. And um, thanks to all the new folks for joining us today. Jill, I don't know if you wanna add anything else. Sounds great. Thanks. It was great to talk with the committee. Awesome. Thank you both. Um, let's see. Let's go to uh, nominations and governance. Jamie, uh, Julia. Sure. Um, I'm happy to jump in and provide a quick summary. And Julie, you should jump in with any additional comments. Um, but uh, mostly we were talking about um, the work in the nominations and governance committee to put together the infrastructure to support um, recruitment and onboarding. Um, which starts with, in many cases, with um, a set of programs around outreach and engagement, um, but also the new data systems that are being put in place to be able to track that. And one of the places that starts is with a volunteer interest card. And so I forgot to mention this earlier, but um, there, is a, there is a link that I hope Brooke will be able to put in the chat um, for folks who are new um, to be able to um, sort of formally raise their hand as being interested in, in um, engaging in various volunteer uh, opportunities. So I hope that uh, you take the opportunity to follow that link and, and um, let us know formally through that process, but we'll also plan to reach out to you um, and stay connected in lots of other ways as well. Um, but the data and management systems, I think one piece of that is um, specifically tailored towards um, the recruitment, um, nominations and onboarding process uh, and another piece of it which is one that we haven't spoken about at the um, at the broader uh, council level is a uh, new data management system to be able to 
support um, sort of continuity and consistency of, of FLC programs and works um, uh, sort of longitudinally. And so there'll be a new, uh, we're, we're working right now um, to develop and roll out a new sort of file structure that's shared among the FLC members um, and um, executive committees in order to um, track those documents, maintain those documents and have that kind of institutional memory that has been, that hasn't been as consistent. Um, and so in order to provide more consistency of programming um, and hope with the idea that this kind of infrastructure on both sides will allow us to be more effective in building um, sort of consistent and stable programs of outreach and, and engagement across the um, college community and the family community, um, which includes the ways we've traditionally done it, but also um, building new programs to specifically reach out to um, you know, members of uh, different sort of affinity groups on campus and um, to be able to bring in more support um, uh, for programs that enhance sort of diversity and inclusivity um, and being able to do that in a way that provides consistency over time um, to really be able to, to support our entire community. Julia, did you have comments or things you wanna add? No, I, mean, I would just, I, it was good for me to get an update from Brendan and um, Jamie. Thank you both for your great work around that infrastructure that's so necessary. And I think, um, you know, what we discussed and, and I'd like to just reinforce is that when we have the, the, uh, those kinds of resources available, we're in a much better position to uh, do outreach and support the broad diversity we have at the uh, institution and in the community. And so we're just very excited about continuing to communicate with all of the families and of course, let the students know that we're here to support uh, and identify resources for uh, the, the full range of folks who are showing up and joining Pitzer. So uh, I think this will really help us. So thank you so much for your good work in that area. Thanks so much. Um, let's see, we'll go to career services. Um, so Brad, Arnie. Sure, um, I'll start Brad and then you can jump in. But first of all, kudos to Brad and his wonderful team have been doing and continue to do a lot for our students in terms of career services. Um, Brad reported to us that the job, winter job shadowing program was one, was one of the best they've ever had. Well, 41 hosts uh, hosted 79 students, um, the second highest ever. Uh, earlier, we talked about well-being, and I'm really glad to hear that financial well-being, uh, financial well-being program was launched uh, this last semester, and that has run very, um, been received very well. We had an alumna, Jen Mulder, who's also a certified financial planner, run the workshop. Um, and we'll continue to have workshops. In fact, I think we're going to be having a financial wellness day as Wellness Wednesdays, if I read correctly. Um, but even after the workshop, the students have access to this platform that talks about financial literacy 101. And I had a quick look before this meeting and incredible stuff. Um, all of us could probably learn a few things or remind us of a few things just by going on there. And it, what a great resource for our students. But that's been in partnership with a first gen program that we have at school as well as the Office of Financial Aid. Um, what else have, have you done, Brad? It, quite a bit. Oh, you just launched a, a graduate and professional um, series for those that are thinking about professional and grad schools. And that is being led by a new member of your team, Stephanie Gandara, who's the new uh, alumni and student uh, career advisor. So well done to Stephanie. Um, you're continuing to provide support for the justice impact of students. We talked about that a lot. And one of the key takeaways that we got from talking to Brad is they need jobs. So. <laughs> Um, you know, that is the, the, the most help we could provide for the justice impacted students jobs that um, uh, they can interview for or, or, you know, have a based on what they've studying, have a really good chance of getting as well. Connected to that is Pitzer Connect. Um, all of us, all parents should, should sign up because that is going to be one of the ways that students are going to find out about job opportunities as well as internships. And we're doing a lot of pushing as well. Uh, to students to get signed up onto Pitcher Connect. So far, we have about 200. Uh, in terms of parents as other, you know, friends and family of, of Pitzer, we need to really increase that number as well. So we have this great ec ecosystem where the students as well as 
those who can influence uh, placements, both in internships as well as jobs, can then, um, yeah, just create opportunities. Um, Brad, I, um, oh yeah, and then one other thing, we talked about diversity, equity, and inclusion, and there's gonna be a panel during one week, one, one pits for one week, a panel of professionals that have DEIs as an essence of their job. I'm glad to hear that Julia Weber, who's on this, on this Zoom call, is gonna be one of those panelists. Yeah. Brad, I don't know if you have anything else to add. Uh, simply thank you, as always, to this group. Um, and, you know, as we, as Brandon mentioned earlier, as we talked about in our committee, these aren't just like nice little conversations to have. Um, this is actually really tangible work that impacts the, the career development and, and I would argue the overall development of our students. So thanks. Thanks to Arnie and to the group and all of you for that. Thank you, Arnie, so much. And of course, thank you, Brad, for all the, the work that you do in your continued partnership with our office. Um, let's see, last but certainly not least, we have our fundraising and communications committee. So uh, Caroline, Susie, Kamale. Should I start Caroline and then I'll, I'll turn it to you. Of course, much of the great work happening in fundraising is happening because of Kamale and her fantastic team. Um, we spent our time in the meeting just reflecting on some of the programmatic things we're supporting Kamale and team on. Uh, and then reviewed some of the metrics, which are actually very good. And Caroline will take us through those because we're in a good shape at this point in the year um, and it's looking terrific. So we reflected on some of the things we've been up to as a committee, um, starting with fundraising training that we're trying to do to help every, arm everyone on, on the FLC um, to know how to fundraise, know how to talk to people about philanthropy, um, to help each other feel more confident in, in calling and talking to people about supporting Pitzer. Um, we talked about our support of uh, and help for Kamale for Giving Tuesday, um, for the Family Weekend Challenge, which of course I hope you all know about and I hope everybody's had a chance to check that out and, and make a gift this weekend in support of Pitzer. Um, we've talked about um, our support of One Week One Pitzer joining together on the steering committee with the alumni board to make sure that we are making that week as strong as it can be in terms of the fundraising element of it. Um, and of course, some of the end of year wrap up efforts will do. And then finally, because we're the fundraising and communications committee, um, we are working on a project with Kemale around how we might capture um, for the FLC, some kind of mechanism for the FLC to help us capture all of these phenomenal stories. And we've heard so many of them today. Um, we all talk to different people at Pitzer, students, faculty, fellow parents and, and caregivers. And, you know, that stories are what help us inspire people to give. And so our ability to track those stories and be able to share those with others is what helps inspire people to want to make an investment in, in the school and finding creative ways to share those through our communications is, is really, really important. So stay tuned for a bit more information on that. But we were delighted to have um, Lynette join uh, our, our committee meeting just now, and she already had a, a wealth of good ideas for us. So, and Caroline, I'll turn it to you to share the great metrics. Yes. All right. I'm going to share my screen here. So hold tight for just a moment. And okay, here we go. Let's, all right. I'm waiting for that little there. There we go. Now we can see it. Okay. So this is tremendous news. It's obviously been a really tough go round and, and you know, morale sometimes can go down, but it's, it's been tough. But if you look at our numbers here, we are actually, in terms of family giving, we are at 80% of our goal of meeting 40% participation. And that is amazing because our fiscal year you know, ends in June. And so this is tremendous. I mean, this really speaks volumes to as difficult as it's been, people believe in Pitzer. People believe in our students, believe in our programs, and they are donating. And this, this was so exciting. Kamala shared this these numbers with me earlier this week, and I was just like absolutely stunned. And so where we are as of end of January, you know, 844,000, if you look down here, we're close to pre-pandemic numbers, which again is absolutely stunning. And now this money, money here is restricted and unrestricted. 
And actually on that note, Lynette had a great idea so that when you go to donate and you see the different programs, what she suggested is why don't we create some videos just like the one we saw earlier that Kamala shared, but why don't we see a video about first gen and all these different programs and emergency funds so that as people donate, you really can connect and see where you're going. But, but again, this was just so exciting and so affirming. And now if you look down here by class and look at the participations, our freshman class brought it. And that to me is amazing because this is probably one of the hardest years Pitzer has seen with a freshman class coming in after being isolated and connecting. That is stunning. That is a great number. You know, traditionally the sophomores and juniors do kind of drop off a little bit. They're hitting their stride. They're really working inward. And then we see again, this increase with the, um, seniors who are graduating because again a little nostalgic you're seeing the success of your student you've seen the changes at the end and then just lastly again if you can give a chance get a chance you know donate to the family giving challenge we're at 36 donors right now a little over seven thousand dollars we had hoped for a hundred participants but you know first time out live and learn and so we're just going from there but Overall, this is exciting. This is absolutely tremendous. And kudos to staff and teachers and students and parents for keeping their eye on the prize, seeing the vision, seeing the importance of Pitzer and what it's doing for their students and not getting blinded by the really rough two years that we've been in. So I'm excited that I get to be the bearer of such great news. And Kamala, do you have anything to add to this? No, I can't say it better myself. Thank you, Caroline, Susie, um, for all your help and partnership. And I, I think at the end of the day, if there's anything I could reinforce is that parents don't necessarily want to hear from us. They want to hear from you. Um, so if you have stories that you want to share, um, experiences, good or positive, but ways that we could, you know, um, share that story in the hopes of making the experience better, or you know, sh you know, sharing information that that that's invaluable to us. So I implore you to reach out to us um, if you want to be a part of the communication side of the fundraising and communications committee, um, because that helps to drive the fundraising numbers as well. When parents feel like they 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 are heard, their um, experiences are shared, um, or there's a light at the end of the tunnel because right now they're in a certain place and they just don't really understand or have all the information that they need. So. Um, that's why working with this committee is just so important and vital. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kamala. And thank you so much, Caroline and, and Susie, for all of your incredible work on advocating for this, this committee in particular, but really for our entire community. Um, this work is so important, especially how we tell these stories as it relates to our, our Pitzer community. So just thank you for all of your dedication uh, to what we do here. Um, I want to be mindful of time. I, I'm going to just provide a few um, what I hope will be exciting updates um, for the, the months ahead. Um, so we are actually wanting to share with you first, um, before anyone else, that we are planning to shift Family Weekend officially to the fall. Um, we are going to be partnering with Pomona College. Um, uh, Family Weekend will have, take place this year in person. Uh, October 14th through the 16th. Um, we are partnering with, with our, our partners over in Sage Hand Athletics and Pomona College to produce what we hope will be a spectacular uh, sort of return back to what we, what we, rec what we remember. Um, but in addition to that, we are also getting the green light, all fingers crossed that nothing changes from that, to produce some incredible regional activities, regional in-person events, um, starting as early as hopefully April uh, throughout the summer. So summer welcome receptions are making a comeback. Obviously, these are going to be done um, safely and with protocols in place. But my goodness, especially from our point of view, from a staffing point of view, it is going to be really nice to be able to connect with all of you in person and also to be able to invite you back uh, to our community. So we wanted to share that uh, sort of as an exclusive to, to our, uh, our newcomers coming into uh, the FLC open meeting, but we will be sending out that announcement uh, very soon uh, as far as a save the date is concerned. And I see Jenna's face smiling just probably as much as mine. So I know uh, this, is, this is great news, not just for us, but for our entire parent community. Um, we'll be sending out some information on um, some of our upcoming, uh, hopefully, regional events in the spring, late spring, early summer. 
Um, we'll be working with, uh, closely with our ambassadors as well as our Family Leadership Council on those summer uh, welcome experiences. But again, we are just absolutely thrilled to be able to get back to what we, we all remember and love so much. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is, again, I want to sort of pay close attention to a link that Brooke put into the chat box for those of you who are new, who are interested um, in volunteering in any capacity, whether it's on the FLC or as an ambassador, please uh, take a look at that link and one of us will be in touch with you and we'll hopefully be able to connect you with one of our um, amazing FLC representatives as well. Um, before we close, and I'll pass it back over to, to Shari and Jamie to do so, I want to give Brooke an opportunity uh, to share any additional resources that might be helpful, Brooke, or um, also just our next meeting uh, date as well. Um, yeah, so our next meeting date is Friday, May 13th at noon, and it'll be a hybrid, so ideally in person. Um, and um, right after that, there's a uh, reception for graduating uh, graduating seniors and their families. So hope everybody can join for the 2022 class. Also, um, for the class of 2022 parents, if you don't already have, um, if you guys can just email me with, um, if you want a hotel room at the Doubletree and I could uh, accommodate that. And Caroline, I do have a block, but it's not at Doubletree, but I can connect with you about that. Thanks so much, Brooke. Uh, again, thank you all so much. I'm going to pass it back over to our co-presidents of the FLC, Shari, Jamie, for any closing words. Shari, you're, uh, you're on mute. Yep, I was gonna say, if you wanna go first, I actually have four things, but if you'd like to go first, you may. Oh, well, I guess before, we, before Shari's four things, I just wanna, first of all, thank everybody for, um, for being here today and for joining us um, and, I'm so excited for all the new faces and I hope to see you all again soon um, and diving into all the various um, work of the various committees. So thank you. And thank you again to the staff um, and to everybody at Pitzer for, um, for making such a wonderful family weekend for all of us. Um, so thank you all and looking forward to seeing you soon, hopefully in person. Great, thank you. So one of the things that um, Jill shared um, in a very heartfelt way in our meeting was, you know, how she, how much she cares about our students and working, you know, six day, six days a week, um, every week. And I want to go on record as acknowledging and stating that I have yet to really meet someone um, at Pitzer that doesn't do that. And I really just wanted the new families to know the level of commitment from every single individual that I have thus far had the opportunity to, to meet and to work with. And it's, it's truly inspiring. And from a family weekend perspective, um, Jenna, um, a fantastic Jill, Brooke, Kamala, and of course, Brandon, um, what you did to make this weekend successful. Um, we just want to share really truly how much we appreciate um, what you do for the families at Pitzer and the opportunity also that you provide for, for each of us to have meaningful engagement. Um, oh, and I forgot, um, I just saw, and Amanda, where was Amanda? I'm so sorry, Amanda, where I'm, I, I'm looking at the screen and I'm like quickly trying to pull up names. So there's Amanda waving and on mine, you're in the bottom left um, corner, but I don't know where she is on, on your screen, but um, thank you. So I, I apologize for that, Amanda, but um, really just um, tremendous. And also, um, student affairs and, and residential life. And one thing that I've been thinking about is, uh, this is a, a side thing for those of us on the, on the family council, but I wanted to mention that I've been thinking in some way, if we were all together, that we would send handwritten notes um, to the people that are, that are working so very hard on behalf of our children. And so um, you'll get a note from, from me on that, and we're gonna have to figure out some way to, to do that. But I just think that that is, is so important right now because it has been a, uh, a two year um, 
just nonstop stretch and I can see it on, on everyone's faces. Um, the second thing is another part of this, another key component of uh, the FLC is the opportunity to, you know, for camaraderie. And when you do these things on, on Zoom, we don't often, you know, we don't have the time to, to hang out. So I was going to ask, I don't know if it's possible, Brooke and, and Brandon, but, and I know we all have many things to do, but um, I was going to stick around for a little bit. I didn't know if you could keep the, the Zoom on. And for those of you who can stay on, um, new people, if you have, uh, I can't say new people, really, that's, that's a, that doesn't sound very good, but for those of you who are joining us for the first time today, um, if you have any questions, um, um, stick around if, if you can, um, and please fill out that form. And if you're interested in our bylaws, um, we can make sure that you get a copy of that so you'll understand a little bit more about what we do. Um, so those were my my things. Is it is it possible to keep this going a little longer for anyone who might want to stick around? Um, so I'll be here. I'm by myself. I'll log us off. But for those of you who can hang out, um, that would be absolutely wonderful. And um, thank you again to everyone who committed to making this uh, weekend so so really wonderful. Thank you, Shari. I think we have a parent with a question. Ah, yay! Uh, again, I I joined the parent the student experience committee, and so I have one last question about the student experience. I heard earlier, Brandon, that if I heard correctly, the in dining begins tomorrow or March 1st. I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Brad, if you have different information, I believe it's opening up as early as tomorrow. Um, at least the transition will be happening this week for sure. Okay, the next question, is it full menu or the limited menu that they had before when it opens up completely? I believe, I'm not sure on that. I can double check with uh, with our lead in that area, Tony. Um, from my understanding, it would it would be going back to what it was, so our full menu. But I I'll double check to confirm. That's a student experience we all talked about, right? Food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Food. yeah. And with wellness, they talked about two of the key most important things: were sleep and eating. So and it's you know so we've got a. Yes, we're hearing families on that and students um, loud and clear, so. And I would just add, it's not just the dining in our dining halls, but the dining across the five C's, which creates such a uh, open campus and a sort of sense of broader belonging uh, and community for all the students, which is fantastic and sorely missed. All right. On that note, whoever must go, go. Whoever wants to hang out and say hello, please do. And um, thank you all. And um, look forward to seeing you in May, if not before. <laughs>